who is a disbeliever from among the people of the book, that's Jews and Christians, it, it identifies us as the worst of creatures because we are not accepting Islam. So you have said that we should respect other people's beliefs and that we should, uh, that we should uh, uh, just let everyone believe what they want. And um, um, let me read another passage for you. Uh, this comes, you this is, no, no, just to clarify, this is about Muhammad because you've said it's wrong to tell people that their beliefs are false. History al Tabari, volume six. This is from the history of al Tabari. Um, I said to him, what, uh, what was the worst attack you saw by Quraysh upon the Messenger of God when they openly showed their enmity to him? He replied, I was with them when their nobles ascend, assembled one day in Hijr and discussed the Messenger of God. They said, This is what the people during the time of Muhammad said about him. They said, we have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. He has derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, reviled our religion, caused division among us, and insulted our gods. We have endured a great deal from him. Now, this is important because you just said it is wrong. It's wrong of us to criticize other people's religion, to say that their beliefs are false. And yet, what did Muhammad do? He derided the values of the pagans, he abused their forefathers, he reviled their religion, he caused division among them, and he insulted their gods. So, uh, my friend, if you're saying that it's wrong to do all of this, do you now reject Muhammad because he was immoral and a false prophet? Okay, if you say that uh, Muhammad is wrong, then why is Jesus going to, whenever he comes, why no, 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 uh, hey, uh, uh, it's, uh, no, you said why Muhammad was wrong. No, you why said Muhammad was wrong. You said, no, listen, listen, uh, because you missed the point. You're saying, if you're saying Muhammad was wrong, I'm pointing out that you just said Muhammad was wrong. You said it's wrong to criticize people's beliefs, and Muhammad, both in the Quran and in his daily life in Mecca, constantly criticized the beliefs. He condemned the beliefs of the pagans, he condemned the beliefs of the Jews, he condemned the beliefs of the Christians, not all the beliefs of the Jews and Christians, but many of the beliefs of the Jews and Christians, such as uh, the Christian belief in the deity of Christ, in Jesus' death on the cross, uh, Muhammad constantly rejected other people's beliefs and tried to show them that they're false. You said that this is wrong. Therefore, according to you, Muhammad was immoral because he's doing something that you said is wrong. So, would you say that Muhammad was a sinner and not a true prophet of God? She there? Did we lose her? I don't know. Jamil, are you there? I think that... Uh, okay. Well, Jamil, no, Jamil if, if, you, if, you, if you don't get to call back, please call back in the next program. We're also having uh, programs uh, tomorrow. Please What's call back and have... What's the topic? Uh, the, uh, give the name of the title. Uh, yeah. Later today, we're discussing the satanic verses. Uh, these are verses that Muhammad delivered and claimed were from God and then later came back and said, no, actually, these are from the devil. All right. And then tomorrow we're, discuss we're going to discuss the incarnation of Jesus. So okay. why did God have to become All incarnate? Right. And we'll also be discussing whether Islam is truly monotheistic. Very interesting topic. Uh, so please call back calls? during these shows. We have yeah, more calls? We have call lots uh, a lot of them. Yeah, poor guys. <laughs> uh, Joe, good evening. Yes, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. How are you? Okay, first, good. Go ahead. It's on uh, Genesis, and you said that uh, Jesus is the Son of God, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. Okay, but in Genesis also too, chapter 6. Yeah, the sons of God. The, yeah. the children of God made it with the woman who born to them. You know, there came a ch chapter 6, number 2. Yeah, uh, 6, that, the verse 2 to 4, God yes. saw the daughter of men, that they were fair, and they took them wife, okay. all which they choose. All right. And also number four, there were giants in the earth in these days, and also after that, when the Son of God came into that yeah, okay. daughter of men. And also in Job, also they said uh, that... Uh, Job. I'll give you all the references to the sons of God. Uh, Job chapter 1, verse 6. Job chapter 2, verse 1. Job 38, verse 7. Job, please, let me finish my point. Job chapter 2, verse 1. Job 38, verse 7. Psalm 89, verses 6 to 8. Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. Pro we know there are references to sons of God. Get to your point, because I know where you're going with this. Don't bombard me with 20 verses where it talks about sons of God. Luke 3.38, Adam's the son of God. What's your point so we can address it? We don't have much time. The only child of Jesus, uh, God. What was that? I couldn't hear you. I said that Jesus is the only, not the only child of God. Uh, if you read <laughs> the, the New Testament... Okay, let me address that point, uh, Joe. I was going to say Pastor Joe. Uh, <laughs> let me address the point. If you read what the New Testament says, go to John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 18. 
I'm going to give you the references, and I'm going to tell you why they're important. John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, verse 18. And then 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. There, Jesus is called the unique Son of God, the only Son of His kind. The Greek word monogenes, the New Testament's not written in English, it's written in Greek. Monogenes means the only Son of His kind. No Christian denies that God has sons. What we say on the basis of the New Testament, as well as the Old Testament, that Jesus is the unique Son because there is no other Son like Him. And if you want to ask me what makes Him unique, we can discuss that. So no one ever said that Jesus is the only Son, period. He's the only Son of His kind, even though there are other sons. None of them are like Him because He's separate from the rest for various reasons. If you want me to discuss the reasons, ask me. Come, he has more children. No, look, look you, you, you completely missed the point. Uh, lots of people can be called children of God. I'm a child of God. Oh, Sam, is a, Sam, Sam, is a Sam is a child of God. We're children of God. What we're saying is that we're not children of God in the same sense as Jesus. Exactly. Jesus is the Son of God in the sense that he is, he is a member of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. Jesus is the Son of God in a unique sense. I'm a child of God in a completely different sense, in the sense that I'm created by God and that I am redeemed by God and therefore a child of God. We're saying that's not what we mean when we say Jesus is the Son of God, and that's not what Jesus meant when he claimed to be the Son of God. Jesus himself claimed to be the unique Son of God, and the people of his time understood that he was claiming to be the unique Son, the unique son of God. For instance, uh, Matthew 11:27, where Jesus says, uh, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, identifying God as his own Father, uh, and no one knows the Father except the Son, nor does any, no, no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. Jesus is claiming that no one can even know the Father except through Him, except through the Divine Son. And it's interesting, even the Jews of Jesus' time wanted to kill Him because they understood what He was saying. The reason, if you want to know why Jesus was killed, it's because He was upsetting the Jews by claiming to be the unique Son of God. This is, if you want, because as a Muslim, you don't believe Jesus was killed, but you believe people wanted to kill him because they tried to kill someone and God tricked them and made them think that someone else, and made them think that someone was Jesus and then killed someone else. But e even according to you, people wanted to kill Jesus. Why? According to what Muslims believe, Jesus is walking around saying, believe in God and serve him. Why would Jews want to kill him for that? The Jews all believe that. They wouldn't have wanted, to kill, they wouldn't have wanted him to, uh, to kill him for that. But if you tell a Jew, you are the unique son of God, you are part of the divine being, they are going to want to kill you. And that's ultimately why Jesus was killed. Excuse me. Let's, yes. You finished? Yes, go did ahead. Did you listen to okay. what he did, said? Did you listen, or are you just going to say there are many sons of God? Okay, good. Can you explain to me how could be a unique son for a group of children? And also, too, is that the okay. devil came between them in Job. Okay, Joe, did you, did you listen to what he said about his uniqueness? No other yeah, son of God, no other son of God is the agent of creation. The New Testament says Jesus existed so before creation. Not, Joe, help. let me answer your point. Don't speak over me, please. If you read the New Testament, Jesus existed in eternity before he became man from the Virgin Mary with the Father and the Spirit. If you go to John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him, the Word. Nothing has been made without him that has been made. Then John 1.10 says, He was in the world. And the world was made through him, but it did not recognize him. John 1.14 says the word became flesh. So this word that's eternal, that existed with God the Father in intimate fellowship, this word that the Father used to create everything became flesh. No other son of God is uncreated. No other son of God was used by God the Father to create. Jesus is eternal, he's uncreated, and he created everything with the Father for himself. That's what makes him unique. So we answered your question. What's your other objection? How come you said... Is, hello? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You said that there's other children for... Okay. He Joe, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your question. God bless you. We got to go to the next call. Yeah, yeah we, we, we yeah. explained everything to yeah, him. He's, he's not just listening, not listening so and just repeating next, himself. Uh, we have uh, Julia. Good evening, Julia. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? Hello. Well, You're on the air. 
Yes, Go ahead. I just wanted to um, comment on a few things that were said on the show. Okay. Yes. Sure. Um, okay. You are saying that, uh, well, actually, all I hear is um, Muhammad this and Muhammad that, and he said this and he said that. Mm -hmm. And uh, telling the, uh, the person actually that called said that women in Hajj um, rub their body parts. I think that's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, and it's not true. I don't know where he Where's your evidence? Or where he heard that. Where's your evidence? It's not true. When you say it's not true, that means you've studied. Give us the documentation showing we're mistaken. Okay, actually, I wanted you to give me the documentation of where it said that, and where did you see people doing that? Doing what? People, ladies oh, rubbing their vaginas. Sahil Bukhari says... Ridiculous. Yes, Sahil Bukhari says... I just gave you that. Sahil Bukhari said that Muhammad subjugated the Meccans after he had given them freedom because he was sick at seeing them running around naked in Mecca around the Kaaba. This is in Sal Bukhari. So I gave you the reference, Sal Bukhari. Well, I have not heard of that, seen that. I, I have just come He's from killing Muslim. you. That is all absolutely fake and you are... Okay. Okay, wait, 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 well, wait, let, wait, me, wait, let me challenge wait, you. Hold wait, on. Let me challenge you. Are you saying Sahil Bukhari is wrong? Well, let me... I, that's what I want to do. I'm going to challenge you tonight. Go back, read your sources. Forget what he said, forget what I said. Go back, read the sirah. Go read the history, the tarikh. Read the hadith. Go back and read it for yourself. Read any book by any Muslim scholar. Forget us. Forget it. We're Christians. We're no good. Okay, we're evil. We can't speak the truth because we're Christians. Get you a work written by a Muslim discussing pre-Islamic history. And I'm inviting you to do this. Read what your own Muslim sources say the pagans used to do before Muhammad. And I want to clarify something. We were not saying that Muhammad condoned naked women rubbing against the Kaaba. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that this was a practice observed and Muhammad put a stop to it, and rightly so. In that, in that aspect, we praise him for doing that. He stopped it. Our point in mentioning that is to show that the Kaaba was a pagan shrine erected by pagans for the worship of their pagan gods. There is no proof that the Kaaba was built by Abraham. So I hope you didn't misunderstand us. We're not saying that Muhammad uh, commanded people to run around naked. He stopped that practice. And Muhammad did many good things. And I'm on the record saying that. He did many good things. He got rid of idols. He stopped them running around naked around the Kaaba. And according to the Quran and some sources, uh, the Hadith, he stopped people from burying infant girls alive. All of which we praise and commend. But that doesn't excuse the fact that Muhammad also did a lot of things that from a biblical perspective were wicked and immoral. Nor does this explain away the fact that the Kaaba was not built by Abraham but by pagans. Do you have any proof? Because that's the subject of our discussion tonight. Do you have any proof showing that the Kaaba was not a pagan shrine built by pagans for the worship of their gods but that Abraham built it? Do you have any proof? to support that assertion. Uh, he's gone. Okay. Loser. Please, uh, please by, by the way, call uh, back. No, she's still here. She's oh. still on. Any proof, sister? My sister in humanity? Yes, yes, I do have proof. I told you the proof is right in front of you. It's the Quran. The Quran yeah, is we, not we, 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 keep, we keep hearing that. The last, the last person, Umar, who argued that the Quran is the word of God, said it's the word of God because it's been perfectly preserved. We showed that that's false. Now, uh, what is your proof? In other words, there are tons of books. There are tons of books that claim to be written by God. There are people in the world today who claim to be prophets, and we should believe in their books because they say so. What I want to know is what separates the Quran from all these other books? What makes this the Word of God yeah. so that I should trust it? Tell, please tell us. There are tons and millions of books, I know that, but we do not read any book other than the Qur'an because that is God's word and everything. No, no, we're asking, you, we're asking you why. Why do you What's believe that this is the word of God? Is it because you've always been told that, or is it because you have some evidence or some reason or some proof that it's the word of God? If so, what is your evidence? Otherwise, it seems you're just believing in it based on blind faith or believing in it based because, because that's what people told you to believe. So if that's not the case, if you're not believing in it based on blind faith, why do you believe this book is the Word of God? Yes. Why do you believe it? The same way that you believe the Bible is the Word of God, the Quran is the real Word of God. Why, why, why are you identifying it as the Word of God? Why are yeah. you saying that it's the Word of God? Is there evidence for it, or is it just blind faith? There 
is no other evidence. That is the word of God. Yes, but... Uh, back up the Quran. The Quran is the real word of God. No matter what any Christian says, the Quran is the real word of God. So it's blind faith? Yes, yeah, so, so you're, say, so you're no saying... What you're saying, what you're saying, what you're saying is, I accept this as the word of God, and I have no reason whatsoever to believe that this is the word of God. I have no proof whatsoever that it's the word of God, but I'm just going to stomp my foot and raise my voice and say, it's the word of God, 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 and that's all there is to it, and you can't change the fact. You could say that about anything. I could say that this pen is God if I want to just keep saying it, but does that make it true? Just saying something over and over and over again does not make it true. I want Muslims to understand that. Being taught something all of your life does not make it true. Either you have facts or evidence, or you're just basing it on blind faith. We've asked you repeatedly to give us any kind of evidence that this is the word of God. The only claim we've heard today showing that would argue that this is the word of God is the Quran has been perfectly preserved. We showed not from our sources, not from Christian sources, not from Jewish sources, not from atheist sources, but from Muslim sources and from their most trusted sources that the Quran has been changed numerous times. So the only evidence we've been given for the Quran is totally wrong. The only question was, do we have any evidence, and we just haven't seen any. Well, okay, since you're so very good at explaining things, then please explain to me this. Okay. Can't hear you. Yeah, put her up. Don't, Don't put, put her, her up, down. Put her up. Put her up. Don't, not Dr. down. Dr. Dirks is a former minister of oh, the University's Church. Gerald Dirks. Did you say Gerald Dirks? Degree in Divinity from Harvard University. Okay. okay. So if we quote okay, you, no, no, yeah. no, 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 I just want to know what if she? What would he say if we said that there, Muslim, there was a Muslim can professor? Can you tell me how a Christian that studied the Christianity in a Yeah, Harvard can you tell me how a Muslim Quran. professor from Al Azhar abandoned Islam and became a Christian? Mark Gabriel. <laughs> Doctor Mark Gabriel was a professor at can Al Azhar. You, can you he left Islam that? and became a Christian. Can you answer why a professor from Al Azhar University? left Islam, became a Christian. His name is Dr. Mark Gabriel Mustafa. He's written books. Your argument proves nothing. That's not proof. People leave religions for various reasons. And, and let, let, me, let me go ahead and add. First of all, notice the inconsistency. If someone leaves Christianity for Islam, the Muslim will say, aha, there's my evidence for Islam. There's proof that Islam is true. When you, okay, th so we're using your same logic. We don't believe in their logic. It would never occur to us to say someone left this religion for that religion, therefore that religion is true. It would never occur to us. Why? Because people leave all religion, all kinds of religions for other religions. That can't be the criterion of truth. But I'll just add to something. One of the people who knew the Quran best in all of history was one of Muhammad's scribes, one of his original scribes. His name was Abdullah ibn Sar. Look up, look up Abdullah ibn Sar. Who was he? He was one of the ones who sat with Muhammad. And as the Quran was being revealed to Muhammad, Abdullah ibn Sar would write it down. Read what your Muslim sources say about Abdullah ibn Sar. He later left Islam. He left Islam, he abandoned it, he reverted to paganism because he recognized that the Quran cannot be the word of God. Do you know why? Because he would edit it. Muhammad would give him a verse and Abdullah ibn Sar would say, hey, wouldn't it be better if I put it like this? And Muhammad would say, yes, that would be better. That, that is better. That's how Allah wants it. And Abdullah recognized this Quran cannot be the word of God. If it were the word of God, Allah would not be letting me change it. And it's very interesting. Many people, many of the original Muslims left Islam. Abu Bakr, the first rightly guided caliph, had to launch an entire war against people who were leaving Islam by the thousands. So if, le now who knew better? Who knew Islam better than these people? People who actually sat with Muhammad. Who knew Islam better than Abdullah ibn Sar? Someone who wrote the Quran from the lips of Muhammad. Who knew Islam better than him? And what do we find? We find people leaving Islam. If you're going to say so-and-so converted, therefore the religion is false, well, you have to say that. You don't find that in Christianity. You don't find all of Jesus' followers abandoning Christianity, abandoning his teachings as soon as he died. No, but you find that in Islam, and you find the first rightly guided caliph launching an entire war against the thousands of people who left Islam. So based on your criteria, notice we have asked Muslim after Muslim, why should we believe in this book? If you can tell us why we should believe in this book, we want to hear it. If you can give me proof that the Quran is the word of God, I'll bow down and recite the Shahada. But all I ever hear is just believe it. Just believe it. It's, it's the word of God. So and so converted. So Islam is true. The Quran's been perfectly preserved, even though all of our sources say something completely different. So believe it, believe it, believe it. No, I can't. I can't believe in this. Exactly. All right. Are we time up? Uh, our time is over, and we are not uh, sorry. We cannot take uh, the rest of the calls. You can call the next show. It will start at 10.30, and the title is...
the satanic verses, verses. Right? going to talk verses. about the satanic verses all and right. for all those muslims who called in just wanted to give you the websites very yes. quickly mm -hmm. uh, if you want to if you say you're doing uh, research and you're investigating the religions please 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 investigate some reliable uh, sources um, I have, a web, I have a blog, answeringmuslims.com. You say, ah, but that's a Christian site. Yes, but we post debates between Christians and Muslims, right. and we have Christians and Muslims arguing on there, giving both sides of the story. Also, if you're going to listen to claims that Muslims are making about, about, about Islam or Christianity, uh, please visit www.answering-islam.org, answering-islam.org. Dot org. Not Listen to the other side, and I guarantee mm -hmm. you the evidence is going to be much better, and you're going to find out that all these things that you're taught about Islam, all these things you're taught about Christianity uh, are wrong. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we will see you shortly within an hour for the next show. So stay tuned, and God bless you all. Good night. I've been waiting for you to come because I wanted to ask this question. And thank you, Warren, for calling it in. Please explain who Allah is. Some people say he is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You've even seen it on some of the Christian television stations that says that. Well, Allah has 99 names in the Quran. And a couple of his names, one of them is the destroyer. And one of them who does damage, does mischief. Uh, uh, so uh, these cannot be attributes of God. God is not a destroyer in the, in, the, in the Bible. Allah is a religion that was there, the worship of Allah, was there before Muhammad was even born. Remember, his name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. He is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the servant of Allah. So how could have Muhammad introduced Allah if his father's name is the slave of Allah? You see, it's a Babylonian religion. You have to understand uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, his son Nebuchadnezzar uh, came to Arabia. He came to Yathrib, since you mentioned Yathrib. He came to Yathribu, look at the oracles of Nebuchadnezzar. And he established the worship of Murduch, which did not work. It, it was not palatable to the Arabs. Uh, so then he introduced the worship of the moon god and that flourished in Arabia. That's why it's called the daughter of Babylon. That's why Arabia is a daughter of Babylon. Uh, so you had the introduction from Babylonian religion. It's a Babylonian religion. And if you look at like, like people in, in, in the Bible uh, regarding the Antichrist, or regarding Gog, let's say. Gog is, a, we always ask, who is Gog? Gog is a reference to a real historical figure. His name was Gaigez, Gugu. He was from Elidia, which is Turkey. He worshipped the god Men, which is the moon god. So the establishment of the moon god was, came from the eons of time. And most Muslims don't know why the moon god is there. It's and the it, crescent moon on all the flags, the minarets, and so forth. It's all over, the symbol of the, of the crescent moon. Yes. Uh, uh, even if you look at the Hebrew word in, 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 Isaiah, in, in Isaiah, where it talks about the five eyes, uh, his name is the word Lucifer. Go to the Hebrew. It's Hilal ben Sahar, Hilal the brightness. Hilal is also an Arab word, which means crescent moon, by the way. Really? So there's a connection there. There's a Babylonian connection of Islam. It's one of the many Babylonian religions. Uh, it, it is totally foreign to the Bible. This is why I was astonished when I started looking at the Bible. I says, there's two different gods. One God hates Jews, one God loves Jews. Uh, one God says, hey, we should not unite the world under uh, one language. Uh, Babylon, you know, was, you know, mm -hmm. from, from that moment on, God changed the language. Uh, Islam wants to unite the world under one language, under one religion, one culture, one, one entity. This is not from the Bible. So, uh, let me step in here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, look, I don't know of a, a translation of the Bible into uh, Arabic that does not have Allah as God. 
Okay? Now, how's that going to work? The Quran says Allah is not a father, and he does not have a son. So how are you going to have John 3.16 in this Arabic Bible? For Allah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Quran, he can give you the verses, says you believe in the Trinity, you go to hell. But the Bible is a triune God. Allah was the chief idol in the Kaaba. There were 300 and some idols. And Muhammad smashed them, but he kept the same, the name of Allah. It's the same God uh, that they had before. Nothing changed. The Hajj, uh, the ha you know, the sacred pilgrimage, it didn't change, did it? They practiced it, the pagan Arabs, for centuries before Muhammad was born. Uh, well, I mean, there's so many details, we don't have time. The, the, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, most important treaty, when Muhammad comes, this is incredible. He's, he's started this Muslim religion, supposedly, and he's living in Medina now. And he comes in 628 AD with his followers. These are new Muslims now. And they come to Mecca. What do they want to go do? They want to join the Hajj. What is the Hajj? They're going to go to this Kaaba. Got 300 and some idols, and Allah is the chief idol, and they want to join the pagans and go around. Okay, that's when Mecca was too strong. They stopped him, and he entered into this treaty of Hudaybiyah, the most important treaty, I guess, in Islamic history because it set the law of war and peace. Uh, it, it established a hudna. And these guys are not talking about peace, they're talking about a hudna, a temporary ceasefire so we can gather our strength to destroy you, okay? So, but as part of that deal, Muhammad got to come then the next year, 629. Here he comes. These are Muslims. This is Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. And they join the pagans. They go seven times. Did you ever go on that pilgrimage? No. My father did. Yeah. Go seven times around the Kaaba, kiss the dark stone, touch the stone in the Imani corner, run between Marwa and Safi, you know, go to Wadi Mina. Every year they get trampled to death over there mm -hmm. and throw seven rocks each at each of seven effigies of Satan, supposedly. All of the pagan ceremonies that were established before Muhammad was born, the Muslims do them today. Only thing they changed was, instead of Allah being the chief God in the Kaaba, Allah is the only God, and if you don't admit that, we kill you, okay? Mm -hmm. The uh, Ramadan is the same thing. It's the same pagan ceremony. The Quran says, you could probably tell us this verse, that the Quran was first inspired in the month of Ramadan, right? Which says Ramadan already existed. And it was to Maybe be... Maybe I could uh, recite the verse. Yeah, okay. Inna anzalnahu fi al-qadr. We have descended the Quran to thee in the night of vision. What do you know what the night of vision is? It is the night of vision that this Quran supposedly came down. That's when the crescent moon shows up. It's better than a thousand months. It's the day when the angelic host is cast out of heaven by the order of their Lord. Who is their Lord? And when are the angelic hosts cast out of heaven? This is, this is in the Bible, the, angel, the mm -hmm. demonic force. Mm -hmm. and here's a parallel. The demonic force in the Bible is the good host in the Quran. The Antichrist of the Bible is the Mahdi of Islam. Second John 2.22. Who is the liar? He who denies that Jesus is the Christ, that God came in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Major. So what is Allah? Allah is the religion of Antichrist. It is a form of Antichrist. It is a system of Antichrist. And maybe, I know Dave Hunt will agree with me on that one. Talking about Sharia Allah, you know, everything Dave Hunt would say about what's happening in the world proves my point. Who's changing the laws? Who's asking to change all the laws throughout the Middle East? Who's establishing Sharia Allah? And what does that law say? Women have no right. Mm -hmm. Does not honor the desire of women and honors a god of forces, a god of fortresses. Who's honoring a god hungry of war and jihad? Who's doing that these days? 
Is that not a religion of Antichrist? Oh, mm -hmm. my, my. Yes, it You're is. You're making some good points, brother. <laughs> but, sure are good But points. we still disagree. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so because you're from the old school, you've got to come to the new school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
prostrate themselves toward the Kaaba when they repeat their prayers to Allah five times a day. Muslims are also required to perform the Hajj at least once in their lifetime, which consists of traveling to Mecca and circumambulating the Kaaba. Crowd size permitting, each round is to begin by rubbing or kissing the black stone as Muhammad did, or at least pointing to the stone on each of the seven circuits one walks around it. Kaaba is said to be situated at the center of the world, the gate of heaven, located directly above it. According to the Quran, the Kaaba was rebuilt by Abraham and Ishmael and has presumably been the center of worship for Allah's people ever since. However, it's interesting to note that in the 7th century AD in which Muhammad lived, the Kaaba was a center of pagan worship of some 360 rock idols that resided in and around the Kaaba. Muhammad took issue with the polytheists and eventually gained the power to have all of the rock idols removed except for the black stone, a meteorite, that still resides at the Kaaba today. So the question begs, if Allah commissioned the above described building to be constructed at the center of the world and right below the gate to heaven, why then did God give Moses its specific instruction to build a tabernacle on Mount Moriah that was completed almost 3,000 years ago that stood 766 miles from Mecca. One of the difficulties with Muhammad's view is that there is no record outside of Islamic tradition of Abraham ever having been in Mecca. An even greater, indeed insurmountable, difficulty is that there is no historical or archaeological record of Mecca ever having existed prior to the first few centuries A.D. While there is plenty of such evidence that confirms that Arabian cities like Qadar, Dedan, and Tema were established long before, there is no such evidence that Mecca ever existed before the Christian era. Try a search like Archaeology of Mecca or Historical and Archaeological Evidence of Mecca. If you can find some evidence that predates the first few centuries A.D., that demonstrates that Mecca existed prior to the Christian era, we would appreciate you sharing it with us in the forum. In the absence of such archaeological and historical record, what can be concluded about Muhammad's 7th century religion? If Mecca has been the epicenter of Islam since the time of Abraham, follow that there would be increasingly more archaeological evidence in the form of artifacts and such, the closer one traveled to this focus of Muhammad's religion. It also follows that there should be a greater pre-Christian historical record for Mecca than perhaps most any other Arabian city, but no such record exists. Compare this to Jerusalem, for example, the epicenter of Judeo-Christian beliefs. One can hardly pick up a shovel full of earth in Jerusalem that doesn't contain artifacts. The closer one gets to Jerusalem, the more concentrated and abundant such artifacts are. Indeed, there are even one million artifacts on display. It is also interesting to note that the name Mecca, mentioned in Quran Surah 4824, and again in 3350, but in parentheses, is by some suggested to be transformed into the name Baca that is found in Surah 396, somehow changing over the brief 23 years of Muhammad's record. Even if this were the case, Islam's holiest city, its most important geographical location since Adam, would then only be mentioned three times in the Quran. Compare this with the name Jerusalem, which is mentioned 814 times in 767 verses in the Word of God. Isn't that interesting? Some Muslims suggest that there is at least a scriptural record of Mecca mentioned in the Old Testament as the Hebrew name Becca, or balsam trees, by removing the following verse from context and suggesting a similarity with the Arabic name Becca from the Quran who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. 
But the most obvious difficulty with this claim is the very next verse. They go from strength to strength, every one of them, in Zion appeareth before God. Zion is mentioned 153 times in God's word because it is the name of the easternmost hill of ancient Jerusalem. Thus we see this passage describing a journey to Zion, to Jerusalem, to the Holy Land. Baca simply being a stop along the way. In conclusion, in the absence of archaeological or historical record, any pre-first century Mecca or Kaaba would seem nothing more than a desert mirage. There is, however, abundant historical record of men venerating meteorites. Please visit the links in the upper right or just below the video for the text version that includes additional support as well as a link to forum discussion of this subject and a link to a printable PDF. Please visit brotherpete.com. Please join us in the Islam Christian Forum at brotherpete.com for discussion on this as well as many other subjects including Islam and Bible prophecy.